Hello, so um, this is going to be a video on a floor I've found in uh, several military masks now. Now, I was using my Israeli M15 the other day uh, when I was sanding down a bench in the garden. It was a 30 degree day outside again, so quite hot. Um, obviously doing manual labour, had to have the mask on with a filter because um, sanding, so there's bits of sand flying up that could either go in my eyes or be inhaled. Or not bits of sand, but you know, bits of like chipped wood. Um, so sanding that down, obviously I needed the mask on. However, there was a problem. When you start sweating in this mask, um, the water keeps going into your eyes and like irritating your eyes. So every so often I'd have to stop sanding, go indoors, take the mask off, dry my face and the mask off. Um, you know, put it back on and carry on. So I think there's an easy way this could be fixed. And this isn't going to be a problem with just the Israeli M15. This is going to be a problem with several masks. So if I show you the inside of this mask... Um, what you can see here is this is obviously the bit the bridge of your nose sort of sits on like all this sort of bit of your head. Um, obviously your nose and mouth are meant to be in the oral nasal cup. You have got a bit there so sweat can go um, off of your chin down there. But you'll notice there's nothing to stop the sweat on the forehead area like dripping down onto the eye lenses and into your eye. So what ends up happening is there's not like an actual sweat channel in the mask to get the sweat out of the mask so it doesn't interfere. Now, if you're in some sort of military scenario or whatever, where you had this mask on and you were getting sweat in your eyes, and it was causing problems, there would be absolutely no way, you know, if it was in an NBC situation, you could take the mask off to alleviate that, so it's going to cause severe problems. And this isn't going to just be a problem with the Israeli M15, I just noticed it quite a lot on this mask as I was using it. So, what I think mask makers might need to do is put maybe a little ridge, um, like a very small one, around here, maybe going down, on each side of the eye lenses so what happens is as your forehead sweats when the sweat runs down it actually goes down the sides of your face um, into the sort of drainage channels of the mask not directly downwards um, you know going straight into your eyes because as said once it goes straight into your eyes you've got a bit of a problem because it's going to get in your eyes now I don't think I've actually ever seen any mask where I've noticed anything that's there to prevent that happening. Now, some masks are going to be worse than others, obviously, um, depending on how good the ventilation is on the mask and how the mask is set up. But I did think that was quite interesting, you know, that there is no um, sort of system in there as a drainage channel. As I said, there is a bit of drainage um, in the chin because you can see there that you've got the hole in that bit there. When you pull that down, you've got another hole in the next bit and obviously they go to the exhale valve that's there so the idea being that when you sweat it just drips out when you exhale now there's lots of 3M half face masks I've used before I've not had that issue at all as like I said your brows there and there around there so that isn't going to be an issue anyway but you know that do have some masks seem to have a very good um, drainage system in them so whenever you breathe out you force the water quite quickly out with your breath um, so maybe that's something for mask manufacturers to actually consider, you know, so you can actually um, have a drainage system that works faster than others. Now, the Scott GSR, as much as I complain about it, did have some sort of sweat absorbent pad in it. However, I didn't think that really worked very well, because for the most part it just dug in and made the mask uncomfortable. So, you know, it, it may, might drain the sweat a bit faster out of the mask, but at the same time, you know, it's um, not great for that reason. Now, another thing a mask maker could do is maybe have some sort of pouch on the inside of the mask. Again, I'm not sure exactly how they do this. I'm not a manufacturer, but they could probably think this up. Which contains silica gel, because I'm sure you know this, you can actually dry out silica gel. So, what you could do is you could have the pouch of silica gel in the mask or around part of the uh, area, especially the forehead area would be good for it. Um, so that, you know, absorbs loads of your sweat for ages. Then once you take the mask off, you can put it somewhere so the silica gel dries out and it becomes, you know, reusable again. Uh, one of the things I had in my old car was it went on the windscreen, um, on the dashboard inside, when you weren't using the car in the winter, um, and it was so when the windows mist up on the inside, the silica gel pouch, you know, absorbs it, and then that just dries out on its own later on, um, and, you know, you don't have to keep you know, wiping your windscreen down on the inside. So I think that might be a good idea, but, as said, it's something I've not really massively thought about before because I haven't really used masks. I've done a charity fun run in a mask before. But, you know, for the most part, I don't use masks in, like, high physical labour sweaty activities where you start to notice when there's a design flaw in that way. So I still like the Israeli M15. I think it's one of those really good sort of masks if you can get it for about £30. It's a pretty competent design because it's a better version of the M65. However, you know, it could really do with some sort of drainage channel on it, but as I said, this goes to a lot more masks than just this one. Um, 
I can think of loads and loads of masks that would actually be really improved if they just had some sort of inner face seal that was very minor, that just went like that, you know, around your face like that. So when you get sweat on your brow, it goes down your cheeks and not straight into your eyes or next to your nose or your mouth or whatever else. So, something to take on board. I don't know if any mask manufacturers watch my videos, I sort of doubt it. But if they do, I've just given you some free advice on how you might be able to improve the designs of your masks to work well under heavy physical labour or extreme temperatures.